much as I wish it was, one hit wonder is a very loosely defined term. How big does a song have to be before it counts as a hit? What if they have more hits in other countries? There's no real guidelines. Or here's another question, doesn't a hex still count as a one hit wonder if they also have hits from a previous group they were in? Some might say, yeah, they still are. Some might say, no, they don't count. But even people who say no might make an exception here. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. You know how in some acts there's that one guy who gets equal billing but doesn't seem to be pulling his share? In the 90s, that act was the Fugees. When they broke through to the mainstream in 1996, they changed how people perceived hip hop. People fervently believed, and at least for a little while they were correct, that the future of hip hop would be dictated by these three rappers. Or should I say these two rappers? Because to most people, the Fugees were Wyclef Jean and Lauryn Hill. And somewhere off to the side, there was Praz. Unlike the other Fugees, Praz's solo career was defined by just one song, Ghetto Superstar. But that one song looms large in my memory, one of the biggest hits in 1998, a gigantic crossover smash with actual hip-hop cred in the era of Puff Daddy and Get Jiggy With It. Billboard says it only plays as high as number 15, but Billboard's charts in the late 90s are completely unreliable anyway. The way I remember it, it was omnipresent. This was the jam. And yet, even this wasn't enough to gain him the respect that people gave the other two. Now, people had already pegged Lauryn Hill as a standout talent in the group, and she solidified that impression with her multi-Grammy winning solo album. And around the same time, Wyclef was making a strong case that he deserved just as much regard as Lauren. But Praz was doomed to public opinion as the Ringo of the Fugees, a guy with very little relevance to the group and none at all outside it. Is that even fair? I mean, he was on those songs too, and he had his own hit. Why wasn't that enough? Why couldn't he make the cut as a solo artist? The man proclaimed himself a ghetto superstar. How did he end up just a ghetto one-hit wonder? And when are we gonna get another Fuji's album, goddammit? Pras Michelle was born in Brooklyn, moved to Newark at age 12, and met Lauren Hill in the late 80s when they were just 15. Her and him started a band with his cousin Wyclef, the rest is history. Like I said, Lauren was immediately picked out as the star of the group. And re-listening to the score, this was correct. She is on some next level shit compared to the two guys. Not for nothing was the Fuji's biggest hit the one that Praz has no presence on at all. But that's not to say Wyclef or Praz aren't important. Honestly, I think Praz has gotten kind of the short end, largely because he usually took the last verse after Clef and El Boogie had already done all the work. Still, he's not useless or a drag. I, I think it's clear he added a harder edge to the more spiritually and socially inclined other two. That's not to say he doesn't have a few whack lyrics here and there, but he's still very much a part of the group. After the score, the Fugees all started working on separate projects and would never make another album together again. But for the time being, they were still on good terms, and most of everything Praz released was related to Wyclef. For example, he showed up on one of Wyclef's biggest hits. Well, you can't tell by the way I roll, shorty, that I'm a ladies' man, a businessman. Note the sample of one of the most famous pop songs of all time. The Fugees loved covering and sampling old pop hits. The more obvious, the better. We'll get to more of that. I dedicate this to my peeps who roam the streets. He also started a group with one of Wyclef's protégés, John Forte, which actually did have a minor top 40 hit. Yeah. But they never recorded a second song. I guess Praz saw all the acclaim that the other two were getting on their own and wanted to make a name as a solo artist too. And for one song, things seemed to be on track. Ghetto Superstar has so many different elements at play that it's kind of difficult to get a hold on all of them. But I think I better start with the elephant in the room. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Senator Jay Forward. Okay, there was this Warren Beatty movie that came out that year called Bullworth. It was about a suicidally depressed senator who decided he was just going to start telling the truth. And of course, people can't handle the truth. Mass hysteria, riots in the streets, you get it. A lot of the movie is actually good, and a lot of it is outright terrible. It's Especially the parts where Warren Beatty tries to rap. The rich is getting richer and richer and richer while the middle class is getting more poor. Just Which is a lot of the movie. It's trying to believe a motherfucking word Democrats and Republicans say. Well anyway, this movie hitched its wagon pretty tightly to the big hit off its soundtrack, Ghetto Superstar. And they even got the actors from the movie involved. Which is why this is the one and only rap video featuring Oliver Platt. And Halle Berry, who fits in a little more. And of course Warren Beatty. Ah. Some got hopes and dreams, we got ways and means. Just like Bullworth tied itself to the song, the song takes most of its themes from Bullworth. 
In fact, it takes on something I'm surprised more gangster rap songs don't look at. The connection between the macho swagger rappers try to emulate, and the actual people with all the swag in the world. Who is a bigger gangster than a politician? The CEO's picking on the small fries, my campaign telling lies. Why do people want to be Scarface? Because he had the money, the power, the respect, the women, the impunity against the law. You know who has all that in real life? Duh! Politicians. Now, the hook. Like I said, the Fugees loved their cheesy pop hits, and Ghetto Superstar features their cheesiest ever. Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers' 1983 country pop duet, Islands in the Stream. Islands in the Stream, that is what we are, no one in between. I say this as a huge Dolly Parton fan. This is one of the lamest songs in history, but it's basically unrecognizable here. One of my favorite things about this song is the contrast between the hard, edgy rock beat and the upbeat, simple melody sung with extreme sweetness by Maya. Who made her debut here and become a big name for a few years at least. One, two. Now that I think about it, is this really a solo track from Proz? He's still working with a beautiful female singer and a more interesting rapper. I get the feeling he didn't really want to be solo at all, because, and I can't emphasize enough, if you were trying to make your own name and you were trying not to be overshadowed, you would not be working with Old Dirty Bastard. My eyes are sore, being a For those who don't remember, the late Old Dirty Bastard spent the entirety of 1998 committing crime after crime. And I don't mean regular rapper crimes like having guns or getting in fights, I mean he literally lost his mind. And it's not surprising if you listen to anything he ever recorded. He was always like this raving, crazy homeless person who would start singing random songs for no reason, but you couldn't stop listening to him. And while Proz builds his verses around the theme of politics, ODB is basically just wrapping the plot of Bulwark from the point of view of the main character. Couldn't take you no more, I'm gonna reveal everything, change the law. Yeah, you wouldn't think Old Dirty Bastard would have much in common with a rich white politician. But it makes sense when you remember that in the movie, Senator Bullworth is literally having a mental breakdown and says what he wants without caring what people think. Just spreading my love, didn't know my love was the one holding the gun in the glove. It's actually a huge spoiler, Dirty Jeez. Or at least it would be a spoiler if anyone could ever make sense of what ODB was ever saying. Every dog got a say. Proz is not bad on this track by any means, but compare ODB's rhymes to his. Pick your balls like Pele, pick them doing ballet, peak like Dante. Peak like Dante? But it's clear that Proz was not the star of the show. But honestly, now that all three members of the Fugees are basically dismemory, I'd say Ghetto Superstar is actually my favorite thing any of them ever did. Yeah, even more than hits don't lie, believe it or not. Shakira, Shakira. But Proz couldn't keep it up. As it turned out, Ghetto Superstar was his peak. Like Dante! When the album finally came out a few months after Ghetto Superstar peaked, Proz was hoping to hype it up with a new song called Blue Angels. So much money to spend on rap videos back then. Yeah, I, I honestly like the beat to this one a lot, but with the guitar sound and everything, it's clearly an attempt to repeat Ghetto Superstar, including the two obvious samples. Is Proz any good on it? Well, I don't know, it's hard to tell watching the video, which actually has dialogue drowning out Proz's rapping. He also released another single that didn't go anywhere either, What You Want To Do. It's pretty clear why he was the weak link of the Fugees. Of the three, he was the only one that could ever be mistaken for someone else. He just didn't have that star quality like the other two. And I really don't recommend the Ghetto Superstar album. There are like four different interludes of random celebrities telling him how awesome he is and how they all want to work with him. Cross, this, this is Carly Simon, and um, I just, I heard that you're doing a new album, and I was wondering if you needed a kalimba player. Why didn't Proz become a bigger presence as a solo artist? Why don't you know any other songs from him? Well, AllMusic.com has one theory. He let his music career go to the wayside so that he could focus on acting. Yes, rather than record that second album, he basically dropped music altogether and instead went to film. He had a minor role in Mystery Men, but he had his first starring role in Ghetto Superstar the Movie, which I assume was going to be based on the plot of the song before they realized that was already the plot of a much better movie. So it was renamed Turn It Up. 
stars Praz, Ja Rule, Faith Evans, and, no joke, a pre-transporter Jason Statham. It's basically yet another hip-hop movie about a tough but good-hearted street kid who's trying to go straight and make it big with his music but keeps getting entangled in his hood past. I've watched basically none of these movies, but I feel like I've seen this a billion times. But ignore the plot. What about Proz himself? How is he in the movie? Well, um... You know how Warren Beatty was an actor who shouldn't rap? What kind of games are you playing? Coming down like you haven't been gone for the last 12 years. Yeah, it works in reverse, too. Proz should have stuck to music because he is the worst actor who ever lived. Yes, can you get an ambulance here quick? Um, my mom passed out. The worst actor who ever lived. Worse than, like, worse than, like, Tommy would... No, just worse than everything. The worst. I got something I want you to listen to. When it comes out, it's gonna change our lives forever. He's perfectly passable as a rapper, but on film, he's just like this walking lump of cottage cheese. So I hope you'll forgive me if I didn't bother to research the rest of his filmography. Peace. He did eventually head back to the studio and release his second album in 2005, seven years after his first. You never heard it, and rightly so. He's also produced a number of political documentaries and seems more involved with politics right now. The Fugees have tried and failed to reunite several times over the years, and uh, with all the infighting and controversies, it doesn't look like they'll succeed anytime soon. Uh, I'll tell you what we deserved, another Fugees album. It's clear that Proz just wasn't interesting enough a rapper on his own. He needed the Fugees. But in retrospect, the Fugees all needed each other. Lauren is now literally insane and hasn't made an album in 15 years. Wyclef basically disappeared into his own pretensions and political dilettantism and whatever this is. You might have seen differently in 98 when Lauren and Wyclef were getting nominated for all those awards, but it's clear now, they were all at their strongest together. And as for Proz Solo, well, he never became a ghetto superstar like he wanted. It happens. But if you remember what late 90s rap was all about, like Mace, Puff Daddy, Master P, could we have used a couple more Proz songs? Yes. Hell yes. Just a shame he thought he should be acting instead. Gee, I love you. Ugh.